What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here today with the next episode in our How to Survive playthrough. I'm glad you decided to stop by today. And so let's take a look. Ooh, emus, emus, emus. Let me shoot you, emus. Come here. Nope, they're not going to let me shoot you. Well, fine then. I don't want to shoot you anyways. I'm going to take a look at the map and let's go run back and we'll talk to Sanchez. And apparently his package is all over the place down here. He has fragmented it somehow. And so we're probably going to end up having to like put it back together. I have no idea. Preferably I avoid quests where men give me the job of finding their package, but enough package jokes. I think I've just about beaten that horse into the post-mortem. Let's see if maybe we can step on over here and figure out what our next goal is going to be. Come on! I don't have all day! What do you want? Pilot? Yeah, I'm a pilot. The fucking best here! I've been banned from flying, but I still do. Whiskey and planes, they say they don't mix. Don't say the authority. Bullshit! Truth is, they were jealous. Even the birds were jealous. Because I was the best. I was the king of the sky. So if you want me, the king, you have to pay. And pay well. Whiskey and a hooker, they're be going red. Ah, ah. <laughs> when I landed here, my plane had technical difficulties. The air and the bird totally fucked me. So my cargo fell out the back of the plane, scattered all over the island. You fucking believe that shit? That's why I'm stuck here. I can't take off without my cargo. But if my cargo was loaded onto your plane, I definitely want to fly the fuck out of here, right? Okay, so I was pretty sure he was actually serious about that whiskey and a hooker thing. I thought we were going to have to do like a Charlie Sheen special here and just like hook that up. But apparently he was joking. We've got to find 20 packages. Where the hell they are at, I couldn't necessarily tell you. Oh, they are all over the place. Okay, so that leaves us... Oh, they're on other islands and things too. Alright, so this is going to be like the collection quest of a lifetime here. Let's have a look around and figure out... I suppose we'll brave the swamps first. Now, I had to walk back through the swamps just briefly to get back for the quest before I started the episode. And there's the little baddies down there, the little teethy friends that we have down in the water are a lot more... Vicious? Motivated, perhaps? I don't know. Maybe they just don't like Kenji. I have no idea. But they bite a lot more. They seem to do a ton more damage than all the ones we faced off against in the past. So we, we want to be very, very careful about the piranhas up until at least we grab all these packages. I think here we want to be sure that we're going to be able to get to a landmass in every case. The worst thing that we could have happen here, we really, really don't want to end up stuck in the water without a way up onto land. So let me go around here really fast, and that looks like it's going to work out. We'll check this building for anything that might be useful. Another leather strap. Okay, that might be useful down the line if we find ourselves another steel plate. I'm going to try and sprint my way across the water rather rapidly because I don't need any new scars on my ankles. This thing right here, how are we meant to access this? It looks like there's a package up there, but I'm not seeing any real way to get there. Let me try and see if maybe it's just kind of... Maybe if we get up on that center piece of land, we can take a look at that busted bridge and see if there's a way we can unbust it. So is it lined up right here? Yeah. Let's have a look at this thing and see if we can do a little bit... Yikes. Okay, so I'm not seeing a whole lot of ways to get over there. Oh, that crease in the map is the way around, so that's going to be a really dangerous sort of walkway for us. Yeah, I was going to say, this is pretty bad. Let me get myself off on land. You can see right there the amount of damage they did to our health was enormous. And because we're in water, we can't sprint. I mean, we aren't able to sprint that much anyways. But the water is just making the whole thing worse. We can't sprint very well when we're knee-deep in water. So that's going to give the piranha a huge advantage when it comes to tracking us down and grabbing us. Take that extra ammunition. Clear myself a little walkway here so I don't have to worry about these jerks 
getting in my face. These sticky targeting is being kind of a dick right now. Back them off for just a moment. Sometimes the sticky targeting, and I haven't mentioned this, but it's one of the actually major pet peeves this game has for me. It's one of the few. There's not a lot of things that irritate me, but the sticky targeting, for whatever reason, does not distinguish between zombies. Like, if your thumbstick is going towards a group of, like, three zombies, it kind of just latches onto one of them. It's like, sucks to be you, dude. And if it latches onto one that has a ton of armor, well, you've just found yourself in a very nasty situation. Alright, so there's another one of Sanchez's packages. Where are we going now? Where are we headed? I'm actually going to use a med kit because we haven't really been using those very frequently and our poultices are looking like they're at a premium. What can I combine that with? Oh yeah, we've actually got Molotovs that we can craft here if we can make space for them. Let's find out if we combine this with some. I'm going to combine it with the machine gun. What happened? The golden handmade machine gun. Hell yes. Oh my god, hell yes. I don't know if that maybe increases the amount of damage it does. The golden version of the weapon. Damage plus 50%. That is exactly the kind of thing that I'd be looking for. Let's combine that with a leather strap. And we don't have another piece of iron, so unfortunately, we're not going to be able to make full use of that yet and make ourselves some arm guards, but hopefully down the line that'll be something that'll pop out on us. The zombie situation, the whole popping out thing, not an MO that I tend to support, but when it comes to freebie gear that we can readily use to make ourselves uh, more beefy, I'm definitely a fan of the popping out. That group of piranhas right there are going to be a big problem. Ooh, and we got knocked down. We were literally sleeping with the fishes there for a moment. The very, very just nasty fishes. Fishes that are not socially restrained. Another package grabbed. It looks like there's some hardware in the bush. We'll also take that just in case we need it. Use our golden gun to blast open that door. And a high capacity improved chainsaw. Okay, so it seems as though we could possibly disassemble the chainsaw we have already to make a new one if we find ourselves another... We got a barricade down there. Maybe I'll blow that barricade off. Let's have a look at our inventory. We already have explosives lined up, but I think... Okay, so we've got Molotovs made. Let's make a few more explosives for the future. That little guy seemed to be trapped, unfortunately for him. I am going to grab his meat. <laughs> There's a joke in there somewhere. Oh, they're kind of coming up on land, too. Yeah, that's a land piranha right there. That's a rather sizable bug that leaves me in a state of just panic. Blow that door open and get ourselves the hell out of the water really quickly. Oh, we've got zombie ostriches once again. Let me get my golden gun out here. And it's still not going to allow us to one-shot things, unfortunately. I was hoping. I was hoping on rainbows and fairy dust and everything else, which I have a ready supply of, by the way. I have loads and loads of that stuff just laying around my house. Let's see if maybe... I definitely want to grab things while we're around. I don't want to skip anything. So let's see if maybe in this episode we can clear out this island, possibly? If we can clear out this island, I think that's a good place to start. And that leaves us at the point where we can scavenge through the rest of the islands in the next episode. The ones that are following. Oh god, leave me alone. Emus, why are you so angry? Who peed in your Cheerios? Or for the British people out there, your Alpen. There we are. Although I know Alpen and Cheerios are two different things. I've never had Alpen, by the way. I just heard them reference it one time on Peep Show, which is my favorite show of all time. I don't know if you guys knew that either. Peep Show is the greatest comedy show that has ever been written. I love it. I love it from the top to the bottom and all back around. Now, that I'm assuming is saying that we have to go to other islands to find more packages. I don't count 20 on here. Looks like it's closer to, you know, maybe like 7 or 8. But, actually, it may be like half, like 10. I don't know, just doing some quickie math. How many? How many? Four? So, yeah, it's going to be about 10, I think. 10 to 11 on this island. It's kind of back of the envelope calculations right there. Doing my arithmetics, my maths. Any ammunition down here? We could really use a bit more ammunition. I don't want that to deplete out to where we're actually having to actively scavenge for it. 
Especially since the enemies continue to get nastier, and I just continue to not be nastier. That spider fell into the water, so hopefully he drowned, because that is the fate that he deserves. There was a spider, I didn't tell you guys this, but today in the shower there's a giant spider attached to my arm. It was a terrifying experience. Like, at first, I wanted to make like a girly sound, like... But, like, after I went ahead and did that a couple times, like, it was dangling from my arm by its anus wool. And so, I had to, like, kind of shake it free, but I didn't want to... I don't like to kill spiders and stuff, so I didn't want to shake it free, like, in the shower. Because then it would get sucked down and die, and then I'd have spider ghosts, which are, like, the one and only confirmed thing that are worse than spiders. And so, in order to avoid spider ghosts, I had to, like, kind of shake him sideways so that he would fly out of the bathtub. And then he kind of laid it on my underwear that was laying on the floor because I don't put things in a hamper like a good civilized human being. I just throw it everywhere. I'm just like, wee! Like, whenever I find myself in the nude, I just kind of become just very, very positive about life. And I just start throwing my vestments everywhere and I don't clean them up. This has been a long-running problem in my life. A strength potion, also known as bull testosterone. Let me see if I can run those guys off really quickly. But anyways, as I was saying, in my glee, my clothes tend to fly everywhere. And as such, it made a great spider receptacle. And so I kind of responded to the situation by starting a bonfire in my front yard that contained those clothes. And so now I've got spider ghosts. And the moral of the story is just give yourself spider ghosts in the first place because you're probably going to end up with them anyways. I'll take a look at my map and make sure we're heading in the right direction here before I get cut off talking about another... <laughs> Another group of bullshit circumstances. Enemies, you back off right now, enemies. I'm trying to drink me some water right now. I'm trying to stay hydrated. You guys are not being athletically promotional. Alright. You are not Gatorade approved. Ooh, there's a freebie bottle here, too. I'll take that. Whoa! Full inventory! No! Oh. Full inventory. Why do you do the things you do to me? Like, why are you like you are, inventory? Like, why are you like this? Who made you like this? I... Why? Why, oh why. And of course, there's nothing here. I've already decided I'm not going to use the compound bow, so I'm just going to... Eh, I don't want to leave myself out of ranged options, though. <sighs> Damn it. Well, the machete... I can already use my axe to chop things, so I'm going to drop the machete for now. Everything else, though, is sort of... I don't know why I'm holding onto this hand compressor. I have this terrible dream that maybe one day it'll be useful to me for something, but... Haven't found it yet. Ammo for handguns! Yes, I love you so much, Ammunition. Ammunition, you are my dearest friend, and I'd write a song about you right now, but I'm a little bit busy. Zombie invasions are not really conducive to the compositional musical environment. They might be for some people, but they just don't do it for me. Like, I'm sure if you gave it to, like, Perry Grip or somebody, he'd, like, shit you out something, but... That's Perry Grip. He's somebody who's, like, legitimately musically talented, and I just don't know what I have. I... I have done, there's nothing left in the musical tank anymore. Too old, too old and cynical. Cynicism is the death of musical talent. No, you will not scratch my behind, sir. It has been kind of itchy lately, mainly due to the fact that there's not a lot of toilet paper on this island. But you will not scratch it for me. I will scratch it for myself. I saw you try and I appreciate the effort. I very much appreciate it, but for now, we're going to table that. We're going to put a pin in it, and we're going to move on to other things. My gun is looking a little skimp right now, so I may have to switch over to a melee weapon just for the next, like, maybe episode, possibly, which is going to lead to a whole new docket of problems. Let's take a look at our environment here and figure out where the next package is at. The next package is up above us, unfortunately, and requiring explosives. We left one in the swamp. Damn. Well, maybe we'll hit that one on the way back. I don't want to, like, disturb my trip right now. Let's go left here. And I'm going to cut up and through. I wish this game had a mini-map of some sort. So that I wasn't always constantly opening up my map. But for now... Yep, let's go up and around this way. So that I have to blow another explosive just to get around the island. Looks like we've made a group of friends here. Let's run her by the old lady's cabin and maybe maybe they'll get drawn off by the old lady. Is that sinful, using an old lady as a decoy? I don't feel like that would be, like, sinful necessarily, but I do feel like it would be frowned upon. Like, like I feel like there's a lot of relative morality in these kinds of situations. Let's get rid of them, and of course I've got to check all the bodies for possible ammunition. 
Because I'd like to get back to golden machine gunning as quickly as possible. Just raining golden machine gun showers on everything around me. Scare them off really quickly. You guys. I'm gonna run you off the hard way. That's right. See, I warned you. I tried to give you the flashlight of warning. Most people don't know that my flashlight is always a flashlight of warning. Like, if I shine a flashlight at you, I mean it. I mean it, pal. Stay back. Let's lop his helmet off really quickly so that lines him up for a quick kill. We need a better melee weapon is what we dangerously need. Maybe the mudguard will be useful. Maybe one of those mudguards could be turned into a better weapon. Actually, we have a chainsaw. Why don't I just use that? You guys really, like, need to stop this whole, like, screeching and running around business. Eh, yeah, 330 is fine. Get rid of them. The number 330 reminds me, like, I live next to both a high school, an elementary school, and a junior high, which for whatever reason, whoever decided to, like, cordon off this, whoever did the municipal planning decided to put these three side by side. And what that means is that 330, you don't get to go back to your house. That is what 330 means. To me, as a home renter, I almost said homeowner, but I don't own my house. As a home renter, that means if you drive home at 3.30, you're not going home for the next 45 minutes. And that's what the number 3.30 reminds me of. Welcome to my mind. Let's get down in here. Grab some more packages. God, this has just been an episode where we've been grabbing more packages than an up-and-coming porn star here. Let's get rid of all that stuff. And I struggled to find that simile. I really did. I struggled really, really hard. My pea-sized brain was just like, eh, go! The hamster was at, like, full blast. We've got him on, like, hamster crack. What can you do, though? Sometimes you just don't have content. You've got to cook on the spot. you just got to Heisenberg it up. I really hate nighttime. Nighttime is making me a nervous wreck here. We may at some point... I think we'll have enough food to hold out, but at some point, we may have to make the jump back to... Not Kovacs Island... I'm kind of worried about what's going to happen when I confront Kovac about all this. But we may have to make a run back there to just grab some more cassava roots or something. Of course my inventory is full. My inventory is always full. How dare you, the player, think that you would ever have space in your inventory. It needs to stop being nighttime. These little guys are starting to irritate me. They soak up a lot of ammunition. Can I combine that with anything right now? Nay? Well then, I will combine that with fertilizer and that'll give me the slot that I need. Yeah, that's what happens. I hit you with a flint axe, homie. Don't ever come up in here acting like I won't hit you with a flint axe. I hit somebody with a flint axe just this morning, just for fun, so don't think I won't do it just because you're in my vicinity. You've done something to deserve it. And that was just like a collective like helmet smacking. Take these guys out. More ammunition. Oh my god, my health is really low. Maybe I should handle that. Okay, so between our health being really, really low... I'm kind of getting caught up in the search for package here. I feel like I've lost sight of my goals. So let's slow down for just a moment. I'm going to formulate... I'm going to use my brain power for something positive for once. Let's see if maybe I can take them out. We do have explosives. Let's see if just for a second we can get that open. Maybe there'll be something nice in here for us. Ooh, another red stone. So that's going to be one of those ones that you really want to break open. I will actually probably apply that to my flint axe. That explosion did bring down problems, though. All kinds of weak. We never found a gas mask, but I can only assume it's in, like, one of those houses that I missed and I didn't bust open. I was thinking about that just a minute ago. We never got to be, like, the true kind of post-apocalyptic punk superstar that we wanted to be by having a gas mask. But, unfortunately, maybe I'll find it in my next playthrough or something. These guys should be about ready to piss off once the sun comes out. Hopefully. Yeah, run off. Run back to where you came from, man. Are you confused? It's daytime, dear, dear skittering zombie. All right, so are there any packages left on this island? Looks like we've got one or two remaining. I'm hungry, let's handle that too. Combine those up into poultices because we've been going through them like mad. We actually don't have a lot of food left. This does represent a potential issue. 
Let's go fish. Maybe we'll be able to like grab ourselves some fishy resources here. I'm gonna go back down to the beach this way and hopefully zombies will leave us alone long enough to get our nature channel. You guys, hey, I said zombies leave me alone, not zombies jump into the fray. Come on now. I'm trying to get my dinner here. All right, let's see if we can get ourselves a couple of fish. It's dawn, fish like dawn. There it is right there, and I'm gonna cook up as many of these as I can, if the game allows me to. I feel like on occasion it punishes you for spending too much time fishing. I don't know how much we have to move around, or, you know, maybe we can use our shin guards as stylish waiters to catch even more fish. Nope, no catch there. I'm just gonna keep on going, to be honest. I'm gonna play this one like an end game in the Ocarina of Time and just fish like crazy. It is insane how much I fished in Ocarina of Time. You guys have no idea. I played the hell out of that minigame. That was one of those minigames that was endlessly entertaining for me. Just really, really well designed. Although what in that game wasn't well designed? I can't think of, well, a lot of people bitch and moan about the water temple, but after I cleared it like one time, it wasn't that bad. It came down to like, have you been here before? And do you know where all the cracked walls are? And did you bring enough bombs to keep yourself out of just a miserable, mind-numbing, crawling situation? That's really the issue that seemed like it kind of faced you there. Did I pick up that red stone back there? I don't think that I did. I think I forgot that red stone. There's another fresh sea fish. Let's keep on going because we're going to use up our last meat right here. Just a moment. If I can get like maybe three or four because as I recall the fish did like 70% maybe. It's still sort of dawn. I mean we're getting towards the back end of dawn but maybe we'll catch that. I mean this is like the time where I fish if very much pressed to it. Like the crack of dawn thing doesn't do it for me. I don't want anything to do with dawn's crack. I don't want to see dawn's crack. I don't want to know about dawn's crack. Dawn's crack can stay where it belongs. But if I can get like after the crack has broken at that point where like the sun is kind of up but you can still make like that half acid attempt at fishing. That's when I'll go fishing because I like to sleep in until the sun is warm. Just the kind of person that I am. I don't think we're going to get lucky enough here. I'll do one or two more goes. Come on. Fish, why do you hate me? Don't... I haven't gotten skunked. I've caught two, but I would love to catch more. Fish, let me catch you. Sacrifice yourselves for the greater good of my tummy. Well, unfortunately... Oh, there it is right there. A fresh swamp fish. I'm not even fishing in a swamp. How did I get a swamp fish? Either way, let's drop that helmet. Get at that swamp fish. Let's go cook all this up. We'll eat our meal really quickly. We have steak and onion. I almost said steak and onions. Steak and mushrooms for the last time. We'll get back up to this base camp up in here, and we will really, really hope that it saves up here because the save system in this game is atrocious. But hopefully, I think that when you sleep, it saves the game. So we'll shut that down. Let's find out here. Oh, my character's not tired, so that's going to be another blockade. Well, I'm going to break the episode off right here, nonetheless. I'm going to kind of let the shot clock run until my guy gets sleepy, maybe? Where was that door? Never mind, I want that redstone, too. That redstone is really, really good. We've got the redstone. Let me combine that with a melee weapon so that I don't find myself up Shit's Creek when bad things happen here. No, I don't want to move you. Well, I kind of want to move you to another weapon, but... There we go, the golden wooden axe. Looks pretty badass. That might have been a waste of a red stone, but hey, what do I care? In that case, I will bid you guys farewell here. Thank you for joining me at the Nerd Castle for another episode of How to Survive. I will see you guys on the morrow. I hope that you continue to join me here and take care, everybody.